for one of the great confrontations in world rugby, England versus Scotland, the old enemy and all that with the famed Calcutta Cup at stake. And the weather conditions pretty much perfect, cloudy, no rain, light winds, and a balmy 11 degrees. Is there a more dramatic way to start the final Guinness Six Nations before the World Cup in France than this game? One match already played, and that one in Cardiff. Ireland winning 34 points to 10. Ireland scoring four tries, three of those in the first half. And Italy, they play France tomorrow in Rome. Well, this is the 141st meeting between England and Scotland, with England looking for a 77th win, and Scotland a 46th. There have also been 19 draws, the last one. 30 at all here in 2019. What a game that was. And of course, this is the beginning of the reign of Steve Borthwick after the end of the Eddie Jones era. Jones, on a winning percentage, was the most successful England coach of all time. And now the top man in Australia. Scotland fourth in the Six Nations last year. They'll be looking for better going into the World Cup in France. Since last year's Six Nations, the Scots suffered by losing a series they should have won in Argentina. A 15-point lead with 30 minutes to go and the final test evaporated. But young and fringe players, there's an older one, John Jeffrey, were oh, he battered the Calcutta Cup once, memorably, for given game time. In the autumn, Scotland lost by one point to Australia, ran the All Blacks close and recorded wins against Fiji and Argentina, putting 50-plus on the Pumas. And back to the England coaching situation. Eddie Jones, of course, now the top man in Australia. They could meet England in the World Cup. But this is about the here and now, with England looking for their first Six Nations victory over the Scots since they won in a gay last monsoon in Edinburgh. And Princess Anne was there for that one, as she always is for these Scottish internationals. 13-6 that score three years ago. Well, England and Scotland have been playing each other since 1871, when Scotland beat England in the very first ever Rugby Union International. Owen Farrell captaining England today for the 39th time and renewing the 10-12 axis that worked or didn't work, depending on your conception of it, with Marcus Smith in the autumn. And Scotland coming off that autumn series that included a stunning 52-29 eight-try victory over Argentina and a cracking effort against a New Zealand team that had run into a seam of form. Scotland led by nine points going into the final quarter, but the All Blacks hit back with two late tries to win by eight. But there's nothing like the Kolkata Cup. 80,000 at Twickenham. Welcome the Warriors. Well, England's autumn series ended with the sacking of Eddie Jones. Two defeats and a draw not good enough for the RFU, following a rather poor run of Six Nations performances. A Grand Slam, yes, a World Cup final, two series wins against Australia. Not enough to save Eddie, and the team being booed during the defeat by South Africa in the final game in November was enough for the governing body. Well, before the kick-off today, a pause as rugby stands against racism and celebrates the life of England and British and Irish Lions great David Duckham and mentions too for Dave Rollett, Tom Dandy, Douglas Baker, Martin Hale and Ken Scotland. Doddy Weir too, of course, who died recently from MND. And the BBC commentator, the great Eddie Butler, a former Wales international and Lion as a player and the most poetic of writers.
Shane Parker. Please be upstanding if possible for the National Anthem of Scotland. To the England team and two Bristol Bears at loose at Tighthead, Genge and Sinkner, Mara Latoja and Oli Chesham pair up at lock. No Tom Curry, so Twin Ben gets a second cap. And Lewis Ludlam will be all nobbly bits as usual. Alex Dobrin, a free-roaming type at number eight. In the backs, dynamic half-backs, Jack Van Purfleet and Marcus Smith. And the 10-12 axis is completed by Owen Farrell. Oli Hassel Collins makes his debut on the left wing. Two British and Irish Lions missing from the pack. Xander Fagerson and Hamish Watson. WP Nell and Luke Crosby were three and seven. Jimmy Ritchie is the captain, as he was in the Autumn Series. Ritchie Gray, a survivor from the 2011 Calcutta Cup. In the backs, Ben White starts at nine. Lance Scrum half, Ali Price is out of the 23. Little Magician Russell at ten. Huey Pelotu is what they call the old Glasgow centre pairing. Cal Stain in for the injured Darcy Graham. And on the benches, Dan Cole is back for England after three years away. Bunipola and Youngs add yet more experience. Sprightly George Horn on the bench for Scotland. And also the Lions test centre, Chris Harris. And the referee for this game is from New Zealand, Paul Williams. He was the referee in the 38th all draw. What an epic that was. Alongside me is Rory Lawson, tricking him as tingling, Rory. Oh, it certainly is. What a buzz there is. Both anthems sung with huge amounts of gusto. Two sides desperate to start the campaign, get out the blocks. I'm expecting an England side brimming with energy and focus under a new management and bold selection from Gregor Townsend. Picked an on-form side with plenty of those who learned how to win here two years ago, albeit without the 82,000 people who are here now. We'll get it on the scoreboard, but wait for the whistle as well. Happy boys. Tom on. 
It's Marcus Smith of Harlequins, the man born in Manila in the Philippines, who starts this Calcutta Cup game. Always a scene of frenzy and excitement in a game that Scotland have dominated in recent times. They're going for a hat trick of successes against England. Interesting selection pick by Gregor Townsend, okay, saying Ben White has been in great Onside. form for okay, London Irish. Pass. He's hold running front. nine. It goes hold. back to Finn Russell, drills it low, Thank you. and it's Freddie Stewart. Off goes the big Leicester and England fullback. Freddie Stewart has started all the England tests since his debut, 18 in a row now. And you can expect to see Gens and Sinkler carrying, wearing three and one. Look out for them. Carry by Chesham whose brother Lewis was captain of the English under-20s last night in their tight, exciting victory against the Scotland side just across the road from here at the Stoop and Scotland and Russell getting caught deep in defence. So they're trying to carry their way out of trouble and it's George Turner. Grant Kilchrist is the most selected okay, second row forward under Gregor... Townsend's management. Okay, he goes in with the uh, traditional Reds head guard. And then White gets a clearance away, and the ball's still in play. Off goes Max Malins. Great try scoring record for Saracens in the last couple of seasons, in particular. Took a big hit there as he approached the blue wall. And we've had an exhausting minute and a half. As a former scrum half, I know just how frustrating it is when the ball's at the base of the rock and you don't yeah. get it away, but just an error there by Jack Van Poorfleet, which will frustrate him, but England just with the upper hand there from the kickoff, pinning themselves inside Scotland half. I was really interested to see that they went 9-10 for the initial clearance, not putting the ball out, perhaps a theme that we might see go through. Well, this first scrum will be interesting because the Six Nations officials on a Zoom conference call Earlier in the week, we're giving heavy scrutiny to this England scrum. They were talking about the illegality, and that Matt Proudfoot was England scrum coach. Richard Cockrell's in now taking over that department. Remember, England gave away four scrum penalties against South Africa. So let's see if things have changed from an England perspective under pressure from officialdom. Yeah. I actually think it was a poor hit. It was a poor hit. Scotland arriving here on, to a, a balmy Twickenham after a, a training camp in Spain. England decided to stay at their Penny Hill Listen to the Park calls. Hotel in, in Berkshire. Wait for the calls. Important to set the tone here for Paul Williams, the referee. It was interesting. Ben White went down to feed the ball, realised that England just at the edge and chose not to put it in. It's the wise decision that his front row will thank him for, and on that occasion, he was let away with it. Ben White, remarkable, you might remember, scored that try against England at Murrayfield last season, only came off the bench as a replacement. England have had all the ball, all the territory, all the metres, and Ben White stepped up and scored. Of course, Scotland went on to win. Matt Fagerson was player of the match last year, the Scotland number eight. Off goes Finn Russell, bit of space there for Russell to run into. It creates the opportunity for Hugh Jones. Freddie Stewart is there, such a superb, sublime, comfortable, powerful and muscular fullback as he showed there, it's difficult to bring down. And here's Lewis Ludlam, he's all knobbly bits, talking to Rory Best, the former Irish captain. He said he's a very difficult man to play against. You know, Hampton see it's back row. Hey, don't lean on the rock. Jack Van Turt Fleet. On. Ben Youngs is on the bench. A lot of experience there. Taken by Russell. He was going to get caught again. That was dangerous from Russell. He's given the ball back to England. Trying the rather speculative overhead offload. Here's Ludlam once more. And Turt Fleet doesn't have much of a back left. We'll talk to Rory Lawson about that later. And off goes Chesham. And it's Max Malins who is bundled into touch. There might have been a knock on, was there, before the ball went out? Nevertheless, the defence was there to cover. Knock on first by White. Scrum here. BP clarify if that's incorrect, mate. Well, Finn Russell. There's never a game whereby he's named in the number 10 jersey that he's not being spoken about, but there's the, the first carry there. Okay, thank you. Stewart brushing off to Pelotu. But from the attack, Scotland looking to keep the ball in hand. Finn Russell deep inside his own half. 
throwing the speculative offload that didn't go to the hand and Scotland perhaps getting a little bit fortunate with the knock-on forcing England into that knock-on that gives them the, the scrum put in but if ever you are looking for one moment to show the intention and the intensity that Steve Borthwick wants in his side it's that Freddie Stewart first carry there's not many people who set down Sione Tuopoloto who's 16 and a half stones of Tongan blood qualifies for Scotland through a granny from Greenock. And the Scotland scrum is fed. Knows Andrew Fagers, remember Lyons, tight head. No. And Paul Williams, he'll have a reset. England, Scotland, they've played each other since 1871, would you believe, when Scotland Both beat England? Not clear. At Rayburn Place in Edinburgh, the first ever rugby union international of all time. 140 matches played since then. England. Having won 76, Scotland 45, sure 19 matches have been drawn. And yeah. that includes that epic 38 all draw here. Six years ago now, when England led at one point by 31 points. Wind up, wind up. Brilliant, Let's go towards five. Keep going through. Let's go towards five. Having been here two years ago, Robo, I have to say it's so good to be around the fans at, at Twickenham. You know, they came here looking for a performance from England, the Scots come here looking at Gregor Townsend's side, hoping that they can go back to back at Twickenham yeah, of course the stadium was empty in 2020 because of Covid, leaning over in Scotland, one Rory Lawson alongside me former Scotland scrum half and captain closing the gap and Stuart Hogg that's it, finely liveried Stuart Hogg these days wonderful hair too always has a shimmer of a tan Here's Malins. Hold it white! Thank you. Oh, goes underneath. It hasn't played since Christmas Eve. Again, boys. Blue. He's had a oh, heel injury. His match fitness and sharpness will be tested today. White. Is there a hotter Holding environment to test your ability as a rugby player than this one? Back goes Finn Russell. So good against New Zealand. And even better a week later in the walloping of Argentina in the autumn. Yeah, we're disappointed with that clearance. England win the, the kick battle for territory on that occasion. Malins taking two kicks deep, just belting them back downfield. Looking to go quick at the line out. Maratoji takes it from Jimmy George. No Manu Tuolangi in midfield, not selected. He was fit. England do have their injury problems in midfield. Henry Slade is one of those out. So they've gone for Farrell and Joe March. And here's Marcus Smith for Malins to chase. And it's gone too far in the end. It's comfortable Go enough for Kyle Stain in the side due to the injury to Darcy Graham, who's been sensational for Scotland in recent times. That's good cover by Kyle Stain from the, fa the, the far side on the, the right wing, being able to get in behind. I'd question whether Smith should have kicked that one through. Ellis Genge came round the corner. Nice, nice shape in England's attack, being able to hold in the tight defenders and get Genge on an outside angle, but... On that, it didn't, on that occasion, didn't come to anything. Finn Russell with the goal line dropout. Up goes at Toje. Bumbled away blue. from the ball, but England have recollected. Malins goes in. Carried from Ben Curry, the twin of Tom, who's injured. Ben Curry's been in great form for sale. They are twins, but Ben's got a slightly longer nose, I'm told, by a couple of millimetres. No idea who measured it. My research doesn't run that deep. England through Joe March and he's better in space and Chris Hadfield they say he was at uh, the Auckland Blues telling me to Scotland yeah Joe March was at Auckland Blues for a while when he battled for a spot at outside centre with Rico Ioni and, and quite often you picked ahead of him neck roll. there's a neck roll spotted by the officials penalty goes Scotland's way Freddie Stewart Number the boys, miscreant boys. yeah I think Thanks, Brendan Pickrow the TMO managed to pick up that one neck roll. live so difficult for the officials Paul Williams in the middle there on the whistle to pick up everything so really important communication channel but just seeing Marchment one on one against Finn Russell managed to get on the outside shoulder got past them into the 22 again we just see here ah yeah it's, it's, it's just a little one but it's just enough you see Hugh Jones brave in there going for the ball I think had Stewart known that the ball was actually there and Jones wasn't going to get it, he might not have gone for it, but the I'm accuracy around that area is so important. Good take of the line-out by Richie Gray. 
And Sione to Apollo to with well the charge. Here's Jimmy Ritchie, Scotland's captain. Lovely offload. Hold it here, White. Hold there. WT now at 37. Yeah. Usually on the bench these days for Scotland, but in the absence of Again, Sandra Ferguson gets a start to Apollo. Lovely hands in a wrap round with oh, Russell. Yeah. One out of the playbook. Don't give it to Stewart, though. He will make Take life goal. difficult for anyone who tries to bring him down. Both sides. He's done two Carry from Kyle Sinkler. Kyle Sinkler, Ellis Gaines, the two props. Haven't missed too many England games in recent times. Okay, hold. Ellis Gaines has missed two only, and that's because he contracted COVID. Russell. Straight down the gullet of Marcus Smith. Okay, White, stay where you are. And there it is. Yep. Stuart Hogg. Holding boys, holding boys, holding boys. Half car banana sliced one, and Ollie Hassel Collins on his holding debut. Boys, stay Try machine for London Irish and getting his opportunity now in a full international. Finley Russell again, maybe didn't quite catch all of that once more, but Scotland clear. Yeah, you just see the tactics of England, they're kicking everything downtown and Often Scotland will have two people in the backfield and they're, they're typically hugging the 15 metre lines. But the, the middle of the pitch becomes the option on those occasions and England bearing fruit from that so far. Do well the line out at first receiver, it's Owen Farrell, then a big carry from Alex Dombrant. Of Harlequins, the dominator as he's called and that's great charge forward by Ellis Genge. Good front foot stuff from England. No problem. No problem with the tackle by two Tupelodo, says Paul Williams. Here's Curry. Oh, he's hit hard. Great shot. Van Fleet, is there space in there? Covered by Stuart Hogg. Oh, boys. Blue, 12, that ball oh, is 12. going to stay in play. Back goes Marcus Smith again. Stuart Hogg is 99th yeah. international today, including Lions test appearances. Freddie Stewart, it goes miles into the air. Stewart's underneath it. Nothing here, boys. Nothing here. Both sides. On side, left. Ball's there now. Easy, boy, come on. Use. Well, no side has managed a killer move yet. They're still using their pawns. Hold there. No sight, sight of the Holding. Queen's Rooks or okay. Castles. We'll now. have to wait. It is a bit of a chess chaser. match at the moment. With a lot of kicking. On. Ben White again. Stewart underneath. He's a big guy. He's a lump of a man. Holding it, White. Huge man. Big boot on him as well, and once again, going down the middle, we see this theme that keeps coming. Finn Russell, can he get... Yeah, he's given it to Stuart Hogg on this occasion. Blue! Yeah, they're Whitfield certainly Hull. forcing Scotland. There's no kick chase there. here. No, Ali, Ali Hassel Collins has some space to run into. Tackle on the end from Hugh Jones back in this Scotland side, and they claim the penalty, Ben White, just for a second, looking to go quickly, but deciding in the end against it. Only Hassel Collins there, and his First international, nine tries this season for London Irish, 34 tries and 67 appearances for the Premiership side, now based in Brentford. Just got a yard away from his support, and Stuart Hogg, Ben White, stuck it out in that tackle, and little moments like that can prove so crucial. Steve Borthwick, his tactics clearly coming through this kicking game, being able to squeeze territory, go long, get the kick chase right, under Sinfield next to him Hold there, the who'll have Hold run the this at you, in the warm-up. You just saw line speed of plenty throughout the whole warm-up, intensity. Yeah, Kevin Sinfield running the defence. Jimmy Ritchie at the tail, here's Russell. Oh, there's a massive hole for Hugh Jones. Look at the footwork. Kyle Stain in support. So close for Scotland. No. How did that hole appear on that Kevin Sinfield defence? England will look at that hard. Here's Pierre Schumann. Ben White, the first opportunity in this game for a try with almost 15 minutes on the clock. Jimmy Ritchie, the captain, goes in low. Advantage! Advantage here to Not Scotland. So what will they do with this free play? Schumann tiptoes his way a few metres across the Twickenham turf. The hallowed green in West London. Ben White to two Peloto. This should be a try for Hugh Jones! 
Hands. A eureka moment for the centre and for Scotland looking for this hat trick of wins against England. Well, the travelling fans can be heard. A Royal Highness not showing any emotion, but my goodness, the emotion on field, the reaction, the smile on the face of a man in form selected, but it's clever. Ball over the top to Ritchie, out the back to Russell. Tight angle there by Jones, the eventual try scorer, but got his hands free, staying fought towards the line. This is super clever because Finn Russell goes in behind Tua Pelotu and move this run. Tua Pelotu sees the space in behind and realises that the grubber is on. Jones reacts, there's no one in behind and he can wait for it to pop up. Dot it down, Scotland score first. What a way to cap off the first attack into the England half. Well, they do call that combination at Glasgow, Hugh Pilotto, Sione Tua Pilotto and Hugh Jones, and it's certainly combined in memorable fashion there. But what, what was that hole doing, that England defence? Off a set piece, yes, a clever line-out, but they will be looking hard at that and questioning how they defended the line-out. It's clever shape, Robbo, it's painting pictures. The line-out was super clever, there's a great shot from the post cam that was at the very end of it but it was made in the line out Gregor Townsend spoke in the week about innovation and surprises there's the first and it's returned seven points magnificent strike play by Scotland their first chance and they've scored a try and of course that has been a problem going back a, a decade longer is converting pressure inside the opposition 22 into points and you can't get a better conversion rate than a visit for the try converted and now the penalty and are England here just a little bit rattled Gregor Townsend looking Five. rather phlegmatic and nonplussed in his sec Never 62nd international as Scotland coach well you have to say that Scotland didn't have an awful lot to be positive about in the opening exchanges yet other than the scoreboard and keeping England to zero but they were second best in the kick chase and kick tennis Second best in territory, second best in possession, but that one penalty, like, one by Stuart Hogg and Ben seven. White in the breakdown, gave them the platform. Three or four phases later, they've got seven points on the scoreboard. Joe Marchant, no Henry Slade, Dan Kelly pulled up during the week with an injury. Elliot Daly not in the side either. To Langi not picked. And they go deep to a Pilotto. Takes the ball in England this time. On and then playing the ball, so knock on 12. Then played the ball on the ground. Yeah, that's a penalty, clear penalty for England. Paul Williams on the spot. All New Zealand officials, in terms of the uh, assistant referees and the referee himself, and being hypercritical of George Turner in this throw. It just had a little bit too much hang time. Allowed the defenders to get right into Tua Pelotto's face, but you can, again, you can see it's clever. John DL runs the line out for the Scotland side, and again, he's not allowing the English defenders into play when Scotland's throwing. Jimmy George, oh, it's a poor line out. Look at this carry from George Turner, smashing Van Perfield out of the way. That's who you want to see in front of you in a position like that. The scrum half, and he felt that. Oh, now White Simmons. Very sure, straight. To Finn Move. Russell, he drills it back low and hard again. A lot of the kicking down the spine of this Twickenham pitch. In comes Hogg. Oh. 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 Easy to mix them up with the hair. Well, it's the now. hair, you see. It's the hair now. Yes! Duhan van der Merva has been a magnificent try scoring form for Scotland in recent times. Last fight. It's rarely that a match is finished and Duhan van der Merwe hasn't got his name on the score sheet. Of Good course, work. it's well Scotland who've got that first try here through Hugh Jones. OK, ball's here now, on site here. Got the chase. Chase on. Ben White, another kick. And another ball for Freddie Stewart to take. George Turner's a good start, good tackle by the hooker. Feet out. George Turner. Yes. 11th consecutive Six Nations game for him. Man, he's actually scored an international hat trick. There's three Scotland players in the 23 have scored international hat tricks. 
remarkable statistic in itself. Okay, guys, hold in the outside. George Horn and Kyle Steen, the other ones. Use it, Chase. Oh. Jack Van Portfleet. Another box kick taken by Finn Russell. Looks for Stuart Hall. Last feet. Far side. Certainly Same a lot again. more kicking than there was in the okay. game in Cardiff the earlier ball. on today when Wales Chaser. were beaten heavily by Ireland. That was uh, a very liquid, fluent game of rugby. Both sides determined to play. Max Malin's on the hack. Might work out. If the ball bounces for him, it could still work out for Max Malins, who recovers the ball well. England oh, forwards clean flood in. Murray gets it. Oh, Curry gets it to George. Crowd getting behind this England side. They've got the numbers on the outside here. Is there a space for Chesham? Piling through. Gets beyond Kyle Steen. They've got the penalty advantage. Mara Toje waits. Curry and Sinkler outside him. Not supporting Here is White. George Simba. Farrell, quick hands to Marcus Smith. He dances away. Here's that offload inside a brilliant one and his two. Surely they must be in here. Oh, Ellis Gaines throws a speculative offload. And Marchant was standing on his own on the right wing for England. Well, it all came from this kick chase. Malins. Not Finn Russell's kick wide. came down, Malins couldn't, didn't think he could ball. get his hands to it and he just stuck his right boot on it. The bounce of a rugby ball, second or third touch, he managed to get into the 22. Scotland's defensive line speed coming up, Smith, brilliant right-footed step, giving the opportunity right, really to his good. Quinn's teammate, Don Brandt. Desperate Scottish defence. Big call here. Massive call, Ellis Gange goes. And poor Fleet Curry, oh, it's a poor ball. And he just managed to hold on to that ball in his hip there. Ben Curry. Russell Collins goes down, Van Poort Fleet to Lewis Ludlam. Van Poort Fleet thinks about the break, but the channel was covered in the guard positions by Scotland defenders. Kyle Sinkler, Chesham. The options now here's Kyle Sinkler, the Bristol Bear. Loose head and tight head, both from the southwest. County, off goes Maro Atoze now, here's Van Poort Fleet, recycles Marcus Smith, Freddie Stewart to a Piloto, takes two men to bring Stewart down. Gilchrist goes in with a tackle, Van Poort Fleet, England keeping the attack line and their attack shape and hitting Scotland's defence with straight line running, little flick on to Marcus Smith, here's Alice Gaines, Kyle Steen, with the tackle. Van Poort Fleet, Lewis Ludlam again, hammers into and through George Turner. Van Poort Fleet to Sinkler. How much more of this mobile battering can this Scotland defence take from England? Clear out, Chesham, the last man there. Here is Curry now, Lewis Ludlam. Van Poort Fleet for Kyle Sinkler, pulls it back for Marcus Smith. Marcus Smith must be! What a take by Max Valens! The beast did all the hard work. And then it was the beauty from the backs and inspired and delivered by Marcus Smith. Oh, it's a wonderful finish. It was blunt, it was one-dimensional. It was power game, but then eventually Sinclair out the back, Scottish defence desperately coming up, one man on the outside, Max Malins, Smith picks him out, perfectly weighted nudge, Malins with the legs to get there, and like an English cricketer catching on the boundary, oh they might just have a little look at it just to ensure that he got that grounding, but it was just direct stuff, it was simple, it was one out, and eventually the dam broke for Scotland. Sitting in behind uh, Steve Borthwick now, you might have seen a shot of Nick Evans. Harlequins and all black, 16 caps from New Zealand. Now the attack coach, the man who says that uh, you can suffer death by detail. Steve Borthwick would be the opposite. 
frame of mind he's famed for his detail. But uh, that was superb vision by Marcus Smith, of course, a man that Nick Evans has coached for so long at Harlequins from youth. But a beautiful side-footed little cross kick from Marcus Smith. An excellent finish by Malin. It's difficult to control the ball as it hit the ground as he did simultaneously. Showed some skill. Now it's Owen Farrell. 26 points against Scotland in 2017 when they won 61-21, but not that time from the man appearing in his 102nd England international. Yeah, we're only going to see the final bit of this. Freddie Stewart actually ran a really nice angle on Smith's outside. You'd... Farrell's there as well. That was Farrell and Stewart was a little bit further out, but easy taken for a man of Malins' skill. Wonderful finish. To have a really positive physical attack from England. Far side. Could easily have knocked it on, couldn't he? Okay, use now. Very good finish indeed. So Scotland still have the lead though, seven points to five. 15 minutes to go to half time. In this bare pit of a stadium, raucous noise when England went through those phases that led for the try. And of course, the last time they played here, the England side was booed off after losing to South Africa in the autumn series in November. Duhan van der Merwe is underneath it. Started all three Lions tests against South Africa yep. in 2021. Now it's Grant Gilchrist, ever present in this Scotland side. In goes a Tose, tries to clear it out, or, or Four, not supporting body weight. Not supporting his body weight, and this is one Got of the areas the referees are going to be really firm on this season. Is the Jackler getting beyond the ball? My Knock goodness, Stuart Hogg no wasn't too back. far away from gathering that one. England's, uh, Scotland's top try scorer of all time. Yeah, I like to see this this Four law one. being brought in and Not officiated properly. One. Really good call by the officials. It's against Maro Otoji, whose hands just went beyond the, the ball, and actually Jamie Ritchie was caught out for it earlier in the game as well. Nowadays, you've got to get on the ball and support your body weight through your feet and your legs. And on that occasion, it's oh, just man. a game of inches. And okay, his hands went here. beyond the ball. He waited for the collision boys, and his hands then me. went yep. onto the ball. But yep. he was deemed you not to have been supporting his body weight. I think it's a positive Seven. move for the attacking game. Well, oh, Tozzi gave away six penalties in the Down. Six Nations last year. Did a lot of great things as well, as he always You're does. Inside, inside. He's six times Lions test player <laughs> of the Saracens club. And it's George Turner to Richie Gray. Amazing that he played in this Calcutta Cup match 12 years ago. Sione Tuofoloto, who set up that first try. Here's Russell, tried to glide his way through, but the doorway to the line was smashed in his face. I can't use it! He's only looking for an exit here. Gil Chris competing at that breakdown. Oh, Turkey waits for the ball. Another thing the officials are no! supposed to clamp down on in this uh, championship is time wasting. No huddles before line outs, quick sets at scrum time. Shot clocks for penalties are conversions. And off this time, go Scotland. Footwork from Duhan van der Merwe. This is astonishing. That is a mic drop moment from Duhan van der Merwe. Have you ever seen anything quite like that? Wow! What a finish! England punished for kicking inaccuracies and poor kick chase. Look at this though. Duan van der Merwe has no right. Goes past Owen Farrell, goes past another defender, squares up Freddie Stewart. Still you're thinking someone's got to tackle him. But no, 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 get the cape on. Superman's coming through. Duhan van der Merwe with a finish from the heavens. Unbelievable finish by the Edinburgh man. And this stadium is in shock. Get the cape on, Rory Lawson, that's why I love you. And I think Gregor Townsend loves Duhan van der Merwe right now. His uh, 16th. Scottish international try after the breakfast time. I can't quite pull myself together after that. Woo! 
Finn Russell says he's uh, he's calmed down a bit since partner Emma gave birth. Got a baby boy, Charlie, two months old. He said he did have a few weight problems, was maybe moving too often and too quickly towards alcohol, but cleaned up his act, he says, moving to Bath next season. He's certainly very focused. Oh, not so focused there. I thought he was going to deliver the extra two. I was going to say how focused he was last week when he scored the winning penalty for Lara she for Rassing against La Rochelle in the last play. Well, it's worth seeing this again and again and again. Duhan van der Merwe, look at that finish. Just incredible. A man who got married back in South Africa hasn't played much rugby in recent weeks, but my goodness, he's reintroduced himself to the field in some style. How does a man who's built like a Tyrannosaurus Rex move like a ballet dancer? He's over 17 stone, do have that to work on. And well over six feet as well. There's an injury on this near side. Play will go on, England. Stomp, George Turner it is, of Scotland. He looks a bit wobbly on those feet. Concussions, of course, will be closely observed. Any head knocks. Sure, good tackle. Well played by Crosby and Hamish Watson. Well, Watson did play 80 minutes last week. Well, Edinburgh against the Sharks and they're defeated the Dam Health Stadium in Edinburgh. Now it's Marcus Smith. Hold boys, hold boys. More Two. kicking. Thank you. Ah, right. Beautiful. And what a pick up by Russell. It's been a lot of kicking Same punctuated game, by Blue. moments of sheer undiluted magic. And here's more from Stewart. Gets past Russell. Tackle now, away. Curry. Slightly leaner, slightly quicker than his twin brother Tom. 38 kicks in the match so far as Ellis Genge carries into contact. Marcus Smith takes the ball standing very still. And it's loose ball. They've got to play off the back foot here to England. And they might do it quite successfully. Hassel Collins goes. Good tackle by Carl Stein. And Port Fleet. Lewis Ludlam all the offload for Dombrant. Wasn't that far away from sticking. There was touched. Advantage over. Yeah, no, it was touched as well over. from yeah, the Ben touched, White kick. Touched and flight. So the advantage was over. No, because it was touched by but White. Again, power. This is lovely from Ludlam. Look, he dips on, on Nell, then gets his hands free, lifts it off the off his hip. Dombrant just couldn't get his hands on it. Possibly oh, no, just overran it by. A couple of inches. Okay. Time back on. Here's our mark. Well, well, Lewis Ludlam's done some great carry in this game so far. Please respect the mark, There's boys. the rock speed, 55% right. of the time. It's under three boys. seconds. And Ireland in the championship last year, they had the fastest rock speed of 2.88 seconds. So it shows the importance of being in that zone. It's what you want. Game line and quick ball. Simple Over game if you can do those things. Advantage. And they've lost it. And Port Fleet. Luke Crosby okay, makes the tackle from Port Fleet again. Marcus Smith. That inside yeah, ball looking for his club mate once more. Alex Stombrandt on the charge. It's only going to take one of those to stick, and England will be clear and through. But at the moment, they're making mistakes and being put under pressure by the Scottish defence. Let's yeah, go. Quinn's Blue. combination Blue. again. Blue. Smith Blue. right to the Let's line. Go. Don Brandt couldn't we gather we again. I, I didn't think we the pass go. was Thanks, poor enough that he shouldn't have taken that. Man of Jimmy. the quality of Alex Don, Don Brandt. It was almost like he saw that the defence had read it and they were braced and ready to, to belt him. Just took his eye half Point off it. Yep. Yep. So potentially just going to catch it with one hand rather than two. You know, it is the basics of the game that we teach at the lowest level. Albeit he's got hands like dinner plates, he can probably do that. But on that occasion, not going to hand. And it just gives Scotland another opportunity to ride that English attacking purple patch. Remarkably, England, six yeah, defeats in the last ten Six Nations games since they last won the championship in 2020. Of course, that record, part of the reason why Eddie Jones departed. Scotland finished with ten points in the Six Nations last year. The same as England, both with two wins and three losses. England, this is a remarkable stat. They've only won one of their last five home matches. And there's the power game. England with more carries than Scotland, a lot more gain line successes and a lot more metres, but look at the scoreboard. 
Yeah, they're playing rugby in the right areas as well. This this long kicking game certainly getting them in, into the right area. So so far, Scotland, you, know, you always know you've got to be clinical when you come away from home. Scotland have been so far with the little possession and territory they've had. I'll put a few smiles on Scottish faces, winning a scrum penalty. Scotland fourth in the last three Six Nations, fifth 2019. Yeah. Scotland have actually won their first match in the last four years of the Six Nations. They also won five of the last seven games away from Murrayfield, so they don't get nervous on their travels. No thumb sucking on the bus down. I think it's been a, a sign of the development of this squad. They, they've lost some games that they should have won, but they've won more games on the road than they had done for an awful long time. So it's a squad that's building, and so far, Gregor Townsend will be pleased for large parts of it, just desperate for them to add to their score and not concede anything before half time. Scotland have never finished higher than third in the Six Nations in 22 attempts. It's hard to believe when you see some of the rugby that they play. When they're on form, they can serrate any defence and build up big numbers as Argentina found in the final game in November. Plus 50 in that day for Scotland. Played some real Last rapier fight. stuff. Last fight! Chaser. On. Van Fleet. Curry and Malins are after it. Good take by Duhan van der Merbe. It was a bit more Tyrannosaurus Rex that time than Ballerina, showing the, the advantage of the size and bulk when taking the high ball. Russell under pressure from Marcus Smith. Forced to execute quickly. That looked like it was not known by Cal Stain. And away goes Joe March. And Jamie George leaves it for Van Poortfleet. England desperate for something before half time. Chesson with the carry. Owen Farrell to Ellis Gaines, met hard on the game line. Steve Tandy, the coach of the Scotland defence. Here's Marcus Smith for Max Malins. Steps inside Duhan van der Merwe. And Putfoot claiming for the penalty. Carl Sinkler, Owen Farrell again. It's that hard line against the grain from Dombrandt. Manages to cling on to it. This time here's Marcus Smith. What's he going to do? Scotland defence muffled up, corralling the England attack. Now Carl Sinclair. And third fleet. Beautiful ball inside. Dangerous Joe Martin on the end of it. Now Chesham. Here's Ellis Gage. Stewart. Chance on the outside. Lewis Ludlow to Millens. A second try for the Saracen winger. Beautifully crafted and created by England. They showed patience and then the critical killer instinct. Oh, it's another cracking score. It's movement. But look at the work of Genge. Inside ball. That was lovely for March and that tightened up the defence. But from here, you look at the ball here, Chesham, Genge, give me the ball at the back. I'm going to give it to Stewart. On to Ludlam. The recycling of themselves to get back into play to attack led to laying it on a play for Malins. Oh, look at this, just understanding where the space is. Genge in behind Chesham. That creates the space in the outside, and it's an easy run in for Malins. See it one more time. Ludlam carries it all the way to Stuart Hogg, has him commit. A broad smile on the face of Malins. He's back too for the afternoon. England get back into it, and it's come off the back of wasteful Scottish kicking again. The pressure that came on Finn Russell led to a poor kick, led to field position, and from there, England strike. Max Malins, nine tries for Saracens this season, 16 tries last season, which was a record for the club, overtaking the one previously held by Chris Ashton during his time there. Owen Farrell missing his first attempt on goal in this match. Remarkably scored over 2,500 points for England and in the Premiership for Saracens. 1,120 points plus for England, which includes 10 tries. It was 30s now, Farrell, still fiercely competitive. He was desperate to win the coin toss at the start, his lips were quivering, 
but the competitive streak isn't helping his kicking right now, not from two. But what a try. Yeah, wonderful finish. And England just rewarded again for being able to get that field position from which they want to strike. It's really clear that long kicking game has, has paid dividends eventually. They've had to work incredibly hard because Scotland's defence has been stubborn. But on that occasion, they did just enough yeah, to be able to get that five-pointer on the board, their second try. But Scotland, opportunity. Yeah, what a restart from Scotland, claiming that ball. Here's George Turner. Finn Russell steps away and gets away from Curry. Thank you. Oh, and England over the ball here. They poached it. They stole it. Brilliant work. Superb jackling. I think it was Alex Dombrand. In there, Alex yeah, Brad, who yeah, had six turnovers in the Six Nations last year, and he's he's notched another one there. I think that's possibly the first breakdown turnover of the game to the defensive side. It was a wonderful kickoff, as you said, Robo. Hugh Jones did a brilliant job of winning it. Didn't come to anything. Scott, the England's defence under Sinfield is about line speed, it's about intensity. Okay. And Don Brandt there, they managed to isolate the player on the ground. And England backing themselves to get into the Scotland half and try and finish with a bang. Yeah, there's no, there's no tap out for Marcus Smith. They, they want another try. They got just what they needed with that Max Malin score before the break, but they can get themselves into the lead going down that tunnel. It would be quite something. Jimmy George, and now they've worked the move. Love them at the front. A variety of and the usual line out function he's from in. England Hold and Portfleet, beautiful here's Chesham, he's really quick those big long strides just like his brother Lewis what a family, Sinkler back Smith, Tommy Fagerson brings him down and Portfleet, here's Sinkler to Gaines, the two props no, working that. well, was that forward to Curry ball was popped up in goes Nell England have the advantage here and it's a penalty advantage too. So they've got a choice. Do they chip it over, take a lead into half time, or go for something juicier in the corner? On any normal day, I'd say it's a gimme, but it's closer than the, the previous two conversion opportunity Owen Farrell's had. So, yeah, they've, they've pointed at the sticks, but again. England's no, game line it, so is really starting to stress oh. Scotland now. Agreed Scotland have made a now. lot of tackles. They've been in it, they've been under a lot of stress and they've been they've been tenacious enough to hold it out for large spells, but it is it will be a concern for Gregor Townsend going in at half time. They've been second best territory, second best, particularly with that game line. And England have the chance to take the lead in this match. So. England last week, Scotland, Twickenham 2017. That was England's 18th winner in a row under uh, Eddie Jones, you might remember. 61-21, four tries in that first half. And the one by that man will never be forgotten in this stadium, will certainly never be forgotten by Scotsmen. It was an absolute worldie. So the half-time score here in this thrilling Guinness Six Nations first round game. England 13, Scotland 12.
back to Twickenham where England hold on to the narrowest of leads against Scotland here in the Calcutta Cup. England over a 420 metres made in that first half and the try for Max Malins, his second close to half time, could be that big psychological boost they needed. Scotland striking when they could, two superb scores, one a Glasgow combo score, one a sensational Edinburgh individual try for Duhan van der Merwe, never to be forgotten. So it's evenly poised indeed. Thank you. I wonder what sort of tactical tweaks we will see from the respective coaches, Gregor Townsend and Steve Borthwick in this second quarter. Time on. And Russell starts the second half. And his new arrival, I should point out, Charlie, is not a boy, it's a girl. My apologies to Finn Russell, Tartner Emma, and Charlie, who might be complaining, but only two months old. Well, two months old can complain a lot, I suppose. Hold there, ball's available. Chase on. Another kick, been so much kicking in that first half. And now it's Stuart Hogg, and the ball is out of play. Rory Lawson, former Scotland captain, alongside me. I mentioned tactical tweaks. What do you think they might be? Yeah, I think a large part of Gregor Townsend's messages at half time will be around how they're going to defuse this long kicking game and get themselves into England's half because they've shown on a couple of occasions they can get in there and score points. For England, I think it's going to be more of the same, but they'll be really focused on being more accurate when they are inside Scotland's half and try and find a little bit more fluency. And Portfleet, like Ellis Gange to Marcus Smith. And certainly noticeable how many carries Gange and Sinkler. Here he is, made in that first half. Both dynamic props forward, prop forwards. That's the modern Hold game. You Hold need there. a lot of that in your front row. Stuart Hall caught instantly by Max Malins. Two tries already to his name. This is Jimmy Ritchie. Captain through the Good autumn one. series for the Scots. Okay. Last fight, last fight. Yeah, it's Balls not box office the kicking tactic, is it? But it's it's getting oh. England into the areas of the field they want to be playing. And again, that kicks a little bit shorter okay, than Ben yeah. White would have liked. Advantage. Advantage here Two to England. Blue. Off goes Hassel Collins. Can he find a seam to attack through? He can. He makes those metres. Sione Tuapoloto eventually gets hold of him. And there's England again on that. Outside the win line using so Gens. Yeah, yeah, you can certainly up. see the patterns that England are trying to develop here. Owen Farrell through for Maylands on a hat trick. Russell is back for Scotland. Important that advantage he got there. there advantage okay. over, importantly, from Last 10 fight. advantage. Now Scotland just needs to try and compose themselves. Last fight. Schumann to Jimmy Ritchie, in goes Ben Curry. Away White! With the tackle, just yeah, a second work. cap for Ben. Turn of Tom, first cap a number of Hold years ago now against the United States of America. OK, use it. Ben Chaser. White has plenty of time. On. Charge line comes in from the mighty figure of Ollie Chesham. It's a real problem, you can hear the English crowd now coming into play with swing low, sweet chariot. But this kicking game is starting to kill Scotland. Scotland looking for a hat trick of wins, having won 27 at Murrayfield last year, backing it up. 11 7 win here in London in 2021. Sailing off. Brilliant bit of work by George Turner. Steve Borthwick will be fuming at the inaccuracy at the line out. 7 1. Grant Gilchrist barely getting up there, but look at this work by Turner. Taco jumps to his feet, arguably illegal off the back of it, but his movement forced Ludlam into a decision to seal it off, actually. I think it might have been Ben Curry, actually. But you see the difference that makes, a, a, a penalty and the swing of 60 metres. Scotland under pressure, defending a line-out on their 22. Now with the attacking platformer on England's 22. Great effort by Turner. Yeah, decent territory gain, 41 metres down that touchline. We have smart ball operation, of course. 
still backwards for me. Michael Chips and the rugby balls themselves are going to be called by USB before Max. Nine receptors now in the stadium. Picking up the signals. Isolated. Yeah, Fagerson and brought down by Marlow Atose, but Scotland still have it through Gilchrist. Now Schumann. It's a big carrier for Scotland. Now Richie Gray. Finn Ross. Oh, it's dropped by Jamie Ritchie. The Scotland captain, and that'll be another frustrating moment for the skipper, players, and the coaching team. Yes. So time off here, guys. Finn Russell apologising, zipping it off his left hand, but it just died on Jamie Ritchie. He would expect to take that at knee gone. high, but you just see the small winds and the energy that these little unforced errors offer both sides, the defending side, but you can see the intensity of this Sinfield defence. All they care about is line speed. They understand that if you've got the line speed there, you've got the pressure, you'll find shape eventually. You were talking to me at half-time about how Finn Russell would be a marked man. Off the line now. Yeah, it's, it's oh, like he's got a, a target on either rib cage, <laughs> and certainly the mindset that Sinfield, I think, will have given the collective England defence the mindset that when Finn Russell is on the ball, so if he's in front of you, you've got to take his time and space away. And the defender, either side of that defender in front of him, also has to get up in his face. And they've managed to catch him out on a couple of occasions, both with ball in hand and also just when shaping for kicks, just taking that little moment away from him. England's last win against Scotland, 13-6 and happened a few years ago. Lovely weather that day. Okay, back on. 2019, the trip in the match. 38-0 draw. Match of 11 tries. Scotland 31-0 down to lead. 38-31 before the late George Ford try. Boyne! Sir! Go, 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 go. Two, three, and the scrum twists away, and England... They've come out on top there. They've got the penalty and pats on the head for not pushing South Sinker. <laughs> you need the celebrations Blue, in, those, in that front row. Yeah, the call by Paul Williams. Not pushing straight. It was a really dynamic twist in the scrum, wasn't it? The ball came in and it was relatively square. And within a second, you just see there, just spins okay. round. I'm not sure whether there's. The call goes against Schumann from for stepping sideways. Jimmy George taken by Lewis Ludlam. Marlo. Advantage for Blue entry. He has a, a advantage here to England. Richie Gray's been caught offside. Owen Farrell back for Marcus Smith up 10 12 axis, swapping positions. Oh, trying to swap the play there too. No, the jump on that didn't back. work out, so Paul Williams says no advantage has accrued, so uh, back they will Four. come and a chance for England to After the line out. After the line extend this lead with After. three points or nudging it into the corner from a, a tight angle. Entry. That was ben Four O'Keefe blue. on this near side touchline talking into Paul Williams. They're so eagle eyed at the line out and mall defence and Richie Gray just ended up through yep. and then Come here, changed his bind, so found himself in an offside position having changed bind. And Marcus Smith now belts it towards Scotland's 22. You see here on the replay, so yeah, see Richie Gray, he's jumped through the line and then he's found himself on England's side, clearly offside. A man of his experience, hoping he gets away with it. Not easy to hide when you're 6'10", though. Smart ball tells us they've got 16 metres to the line. Yeah, right, taken right. by Chesham. Here's Curry. Don't run again against the grain. A move England have run several times in this game. Sinker, what a beautiful tip on. England pulsing towards the Scottish line. No. Can Scotland stop them this time? No, they can't. Alex Ellis Gaines, who goes into the in for the try and England's orchestra very much in tune there again it's just so punishing it's the power 
Steve Bordwick will be delighted. It's a strike move off the line out. Look at this ball. Bouncing out Curry. Finds Tom Blatt on an amazing angle on the unders. It's a good tackle by Crosby. But round the corner, soft hand sink out to Genj. Again, there's one more round the corner hit Van Poorfleet to Curry, who's recycling himself. And Van Poorfleet looks up back to the left hand side. Genj has only just gone up off the deck. Three metres out, dives over. England's attack just keeps on coming, relentless intensity. Seven points this time, Farrell with a conversion. And England start this second half the better. Yeah, and you talk about making an impact, the great sides do it. Just before half time, just after half time. Malin's just before the blow, and just eight minutes now into this second half. Ellis Gaines going into, and what a difference it's made to the complexion of this game and the scoreboard as Russell restarts. Whoa. Ball knocked on, clumsy England from the restart. It's always that massive frustration, just scored a try. Maybe the concentration dips, not quite sure what causes it, but it does seem to happen a lot. Yeah, maybe just taking a while for his heart rate to come down after the celebrations of the, the Genge score. But that's an, that's an uncharacteristic error. Tom Brandt must have had three or four so far this afternoon handling errors. That one's the, arguably one that he will not forgive himself for from the kickoff without being under a huge amount of pressure. And we talk so much, don't we, Rob, about kickoff, diffusing a kickoff, exiting your lines, and then trying to get that gain in territory before the next breakdown. On this occasion, they've spoon fed Scotland the platform. He has a 12 carries though, and those Boy! mistakes. Don Brandt, 60 metres he's made. And turnovers. And then to that mix. Okay. Control your space. Control your space. Make it easy for me. Kyle Sinkler. Control your space. It's both of you. Yeah, let's go. 2019. Taking off the concussion. So I think we got a top, top couple of eight tries. Again, we were talking at half time the, the front row forwards, the work they get through. Genge and Sinclair, Schumann, Turner, George, you know, even Nell and the advanced 37 years and the ability to handle the ball and understand how to play it's really Boys. so impressive. Well, Genge is the next number eight and centre. You quite often find that now. Top forwards who played in, in the back row and in the back line. All about the ball. Here's Ben White Nothing missing clear. out Russell. It's the only two a Toloto, lovely move from Scotland. Here's Hogg. England had to chase Go across down. fast through Max Malins there. Front foot for Scotland. Russell, Pierre Skewman. They got to him early through Sinkler. Great tackle He's by the tight fight. head. Off goes Ben White. Ben White's away here for Scotland. And Scotland come fighting back into this Calcutta Cup game. What a score. What awareness from the scrum half. Oh, an individual try from nowhere. Great strike play by Scotland into the outside channels. Finn Russell, look at this tackle by Sinclair on Schumann. But the ball comes out dangerously. But it turns into a one on one. White turns his back, pirouettes away from the desperate tackle and then steps inside, look at Curry, he's desperate for that ball, but White manages to pirouette and get away from him, understands Stewart's coming across, huge reaction, what a finish by that young man, okay. on the biggest of stages, on the biggest of days, in the number nine jersey. One of things twice now that Stewart's been stepped on the inside, and I know he's flying across in the other direction, it's incredibly difficult to stop that, first two hand under Merva, and now... Ben White. Thanks, man. Laconic <laughs> strike from Finn Russell. What a game we have here. 20 points to 19 now. And it was actually came from the inaccuracy or a bit of fortune. White actually not not megged himself by getting the hands on it. It slid out the back, but so quick to react. Individual try from nowhere. Scotland right back in the mix. Marcus Smith, Scotland need to focus on the restart, which they do, taken well by Matt Fagerson, who himself is taken in shuddering fashion by Lewis Ludlam. He's like a psychotic octopus 
Okay. Unbelievable. Ball's here. Time to use Bob it. Neil Boots try Holding. stopping that. He's all arms and Chase legs. Really best was telling him that knobbly Holding. bits and bone and gristle that are hampered the flanker. <laughs> Makes his presence known around the field. And certainly the Scotland number eight, Matt Fagerson, felt it there. Lines yours. We talk about exits. There's Ben White gets the platform. That's a good outcome. Kicking over his left shoulder to the left touch line. 25 metre gain. Jimmy George, well played. Grant Gilchrist getting in the way. How can Scotland get it away? Russell under pressure. Sione to Apollodo. Hugh Jones. Yeah, good job. Opted it on the kick. Is that That's the right. right choice, Freddie Stewart? Holding Again, England down the middle of the field and long. It's been a tactic. Blue. Russell. 12. Hold. This is the area. This is the area whereby England had massive dominance. You Stand see the length of the kick from Stewart again, going over Stain's shoulder. Not known, necessarily known for his kicking. Stewart's kick was over 50 metres, just to back up what you're saying there, Rory. The, the biggest boot in that back three, I, I imagine it's Stuart Hogg, is it? Yeah, undoubtedly. And if, England will be smart, though. They're probably kicking to the side of the field that yeah, Stuart Hogg cross is cross. not on. And on that occasion, they picked out Stain. It's actually a decent decent exit. England need to get their line-out working. Yeah, it's been malfunctioning of late, taken by Chesham there this time. Here's Owen Farrell, little step, clever step. Gets beyond Turner. He's made some very important tackles in this game. Jamie George now carries into Fagerson. And Portfleet, Marcus Smith holds it up for Ollie Hassel Collins. Tackled by Hugh Jones. What was that? Back now in a Glasgow shirt. The number 13 who scored Scotland's first try. Here's Marcus Smith once more and Lewis Ludlam. Forwards and backs, all willing carriers in that channel beyond the rock. Richie Gregg was in trying to hold Scotland or England off the ground. And Portfleet ships it into the who will not be too happy with that one, I suggest. Option, okay, back we go. Just a little yep. moment there, Van Portfleet, Rye smile. He knows that he had overcooked that one. A little bit too much porridge this morning, perhaps, for Jack Van Portfleet. But in these little moments, the game can turn. We saw it with Scotland getting into England's half through a penalty. They were defending on their own 22, got a penalty, got into England's 22, scored points. On this occasion, even just a little unforced error than that just provides the opportunity for Scotland to get territory, which they really have struggled with. Has Scotland, has porridge reached England from Scotland? Well, I'd imagine so. so mo most of what's good in Scotland, everybody else wants. <laughs> I, I reckon they would hold off on the little dram of whiskey to, to add the rocket fuel to it, Robbo, but anyone with any wisdom knows that porridge gives you half a chance on any given day. And you cannot beat porridge with a little dram of whiskey and some double cream. Ooh, no. If you know, you know. <laughs> Don Brandt goes off, Ben Earl comes on. There he is, number 20. Boy! 14th cap all off the bench. Sure. Oh, it's a big try again. Scotland under pressure. Get the ball out quickly enough to Sione Tupoloto. Using his bulk to try and get himself towards that gain line. Russell. And here's Stuart Hogg. 27 tries for Scotland. Going backwards, though. Luke Crosby. Yep. Russell targeted by Ellis Gaines didn't didn't give him any time or space to move in Finn Russell it's another easy one to say unforced error but the, the pressure comes from the defensive intensity from England from the phase plate first phase they got up off the line made their tackles then they sprint round the corner and come out straight out the blocks all they want to do is take time and space away from Finn Russell. And you said Genge sliding in on his knees to try and get on the charge line. Ludlam, Chesham won the line out. Here's Owen Farrell, the Marchant. Runs into traffic. Maybe sucked in a defender or two. We shall maybe find out very shortly as Marcus Smith goes. WT Nell still getting 
through a lot of work. Easy now, boys. And truthfully, Farrell for Balans. The Saracens 1 2. Here's Van Poortvliet now. Van Poortvliet's away here. Needs support. Gets it from Chesson. Bull like rampage here from England. Now Ludlam. Dangerous moments for Scotland. They've reset their defence. England go the other way, though. There's fewer Scottish numbers on this side. Can Marcus Smith take advantage of it? Not quite. Surely to a Poloto. Blasts him into touch. I'll tell you what. No, no. no. WP now breathes deeply. He's taking a knee, and he'll have a big sigh of relief there. Yeah. Malins burst through the tackle of Turner. Eventually brought down Van Portfleet. Sees the space. Running ragged. WP Nell and once again yep. chess him on the shoulder. It's the only two blocks. So look at this, he just holds feet, holds feet, holds feet, bang! Out of play. If he jumps out of line there, he's at, he's at risk of leaving a one on one. That was nine. It's that old Marcus Smith goose step. <laughs> if you watch Harlequin's play on England, you see it game after game. He always chucks in one or two, and there's Ben Young's coming on, such experience. 122nd appearance, 54th match in the Six Nations. Would you believe that? Dempsey coming on for Scotland. Fraser Brown, Simon Bergen, WT now 37 years of age. Good shift from him almost three quarters of the game. Dempsey, an Australian international at the last World Cup in Japan. Only qualifying for Scotland. And he's got a razor sharp haircut as well. Fraser Brown. The replacement front row all at 65 minutes last week for Glasgow against the Dragons. Back, Back to Russell. Holding out, Luke. That's a better strike. Oh, yeah. England had no intent at all of going quickly. Stewart was on the inside for Hassel Collins. He could have used him. But quite happy to start again from a set piece. Nothing like your first throw having to be a 25 metre throw, five metres from your line. Fraser Brown hits it, hits it on the money. Chess him again, they're going to him by rote now. Farrell. Good defence in the midfield, Matt Ferguson is in there. 17th carry from try score again, and Carl Sinkler's close to that number two. And Scotland have got their hands on the ball here. And they're away through Jack Dempsey. He played 80 minutes for Glasgow against the Dragons last week, just getting some match fitness under the old belt. Holding white! Holding! Another booming long kick. And it's two hold this time. He can boom Step them too. Blue. And he can kick penalties from now. inside his own half. Middle holding. Yep. Same again, white! And you can clearly see what the instructions are to this England team. Carl Stain to Finn Russell. Spins it. Oh, they're going to get trapped here, are they? Scotland do hand under Merva is surrounded. The lynch mob in white was there. Farrell's hurt himself in that tackle. Leave it now, 20. Scotland going wide. Jimmy Ritchie, and he's got pace on the outside and bulking. Cal Stain. Cal Stain away. Support is there. Stuart Hogg. The score Scotland, they still might. It hasn't gone forward. Sione Tuopoloto on the ball. Oh, it has gone forward. There were so many blue shirts around there, honey potting around the ball carrier. And how Scotland may rue that missed opportunity. Okay. That could be the moment, off, Robo. That could be the moment. Some from blue, some from white. It's an outstanding attack, Stuart Hogg. Just eyes up the last defender, throws it inside. It's behind Stain, could have taken it. Deemed to have gone forward, but that was the moment for Scotland. They've gone from inside their own half. Duan van der Merwe did brilliantly to buy himself some time. Under a bit of pressure, rode the tackle from Farrell and created the counter opportunity. Look at the effort as well, though. No doubt now there'll be some tired bodies, more wholesale changes this time by England. Scotland making almost twice the tackles of England. And missing more tackles too. Everything okay? Oh, he's gone over there, so Zikwe, there he is. Look at Zikwe. 
uh, Saracens went to you know, have been Saints during Cole and a good good spell there down at Franklin's Garden. Right, Stan Cole's been recalled. Water off. Old King Cole, 35 years of age, his first cap since the World Cup final when he was on the bench, but came on very early. Yeah, you might remember when Carl Sinker left after two minutes. And he's played over 300 matches for Leicester. He'll not be tapping, will he? Cool old head. Just incredible. I loved his interview in the week. What, you know, what, what do you bring back to this England, this England squad? And good look, charm, occasional humour. Oh, he's, he's so experienced it. Okay. All right, guys. So experienced in that Scrum in the white of England. The time off. Let's get these guys but my goodness. Well, look at the carries. We don't no wonder he's exhausted. 17 carries and good carries they were too. Most of them New just not try. New men, spice and balance. Spice and balance. And over 80 meters in total, which is remarkable for a, a top four. But again, it shows what the modern game is all about. A little bit concerning to see Finn Russell on 15 as Scotland's top carrier within that. I guess, I guess that highlights the, the, the time that the English defence have taken away from him, forcing him to carry at times whereby otherwise he might have passed. Advantage, Lewis Ludlam's gone into number eight. Well, car crusher stuff from England at scrum time, winning the penalty. And just on the field, he'll, he'll love his return. And blue head, uh, blue tight head. As you say, we're a very understated individual with a very dry wit. It's just the cohesion, staying in the fight here. It's a big, it's a big call. Probably, you know, going going for England. They were going forward, just edging Scotland backwards. The ball was in for that long time, and I can imagine the front row experience would have just said, look, don't even think about taking this ball out. We're scrumming for 20 seconds here. Michael Vinopola on. Ryan's test player, of course, on the bench. OK, we've got a mall Saracens, all that has been his massive experience at Lucid Tighthead for England now. OK. And yes. OK, stationary white! Go off New England. There's Ben Earl, a little pop ball from Jimmy George. Ben Youngs is in there, finds Chesham. He's looking Good pressure work, in the line out, and with ball in no. hand. Lewis Ludlam again, really difficult man to bring down. Head down to Ben Youngs, chips into the corner, Hogg decides Holding to play. Move. And there. England can maybe move the ball back on field yes. here. No, Ben Youngs decides to go straight. Kyle Stain makes the tackle. Toje to Ludlam, Schumann with the tackle. Can England clear the ball out here quickly enough? They've slowed it down, Scotland. Jimmy Ritchie was over the ball. Here's Jimmy George. And that's a good tackle on Farrell by Ben White. Now Marco Vunapola. Fourth thing in prop, the lead 75 caps, Luna Pola, Ludlam yep. carries All once more. Up. Scotland coming through really quickly there through Stuart Hogg, keeping the pressure on England, but they've won the penalty. You can't play the ball in there. Playing the ball on the ground, says Paul Williams, Ten and it's right in front of Nine those sticks. Positive counter Scotland had managed to soak up the attacks and actually build slow ball and relative dominance. Oh, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Shot call. Interesting, Ben Young's just talking there, saying yeah, Scotland know. defensively oh, reloading, getting in his way, getting his tackle line. You see, that, that was actually Matt Fagerson. It was just as we came in on the replay there. Matt Fagerson, I think it, that's it. That's Ben Young's using all of his experience because Stuart Hogg, super quick round the corner, identifying that Ben Young's takes a step or two before passing the ball away. Often likes to threaten round the sides no, himself. No, no. And Hands in the rock. Stuart Hogg was onto him there, got the opportunity, but just... Scotland nibbling at it, too tasty, penalised for hands in the ruck, three points Farrell. Change for England, Anthony Watson coming on for the man on his debut, Ollie Hassel-Collins. England 
closing in. They hope on victory. The last slam was 2016. Long way to go. This is round one, of course. But they'll want to end this short but painful Scotland who who love them. Gets absolutely wham baffled from the restart. Holding the blue last fight. Blue. Kyle Stain will keep on going. That kick chase. Okay. Chasers. Chasers ben Youngs. And Stuart Hall for Finn Russell. And England have kept them very, very quiet today. And as he turned the ball over on the ground, surely you cannot... Not well, England off their feet, but you can't play the ball no. when you're off your feet, Ben Earl. Well, he's he's, a, he's amazed by that. Not supporting your body weight. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> Should he be? All happened so quick. It's another Finn Russell carry. So they are kicked down, kicked down town. Ben Youngs, Stuart Hogg takes it. Finn Russell's one pass inside, and Finn Russell doesn't have an option beyond that. He ends up getting snapped here. Earl goes high. Let's see, straight over the top of the ball. He means he's got a case. I think he does. I, I did think that he might have a case there. I saw him warming up, Rubble, and he's very nearly doing the splits. In his ability to get a wide base for a jackal, so he is. I thought he was supporting his weight, and one's gone against him there. Yeah, might have a call there. Thanks, to Ben Earl. He got himself into a very good position. Jack Willis is very similar in that respect. Good. The flexibility in the legs to get that wide leg spread. And here comes Scotland, driving forward through Fraser Brown. Well, it's Ben White, Sione, Tupelo 2, and England have marked up well. But from football for Scotland, Johnny Gray, Champions Cup and Premiership winner with the Exeter Chiefs. As, of course, is Stuart Hogg, and now it's... ...for Scotland. And England are offside here. So they've got this advantage for Ben White. Jimmy Ritchie chops inside, brought down by Marco Vinipola. Ben White to Batty. Finn Russell plays it into the space where Kyle Steno is almost, almost, but not quite getting there. For what? It would be just like Russell to produce a match-winning moment, though, wouldn't it? Oh, it's another mini-moment. Oh, Look at this, game of inches. Four. Oh, Never been I reckon he takes seven out of ten of those. Even reaching out, full stride, ball on a sixpence. Shot called. Interesting call going for post, but I think it's the right call. Narrow that gap to one point. But yeah, tough. House money, knowing that the advantage was coming. That man on now, Blair Kinghorn. Yeah, Stuart Hall gone his 99th appearance, 97 for Scotland. Most of those, even 90, have been starts. And that's a bit of a worry going forward the next week. The ice going on to Stuart Hall's knee. I like to think that's just precautionary. He has a, on, had on, ongoing knee challenges. First 80 minutes. Let's not forget, he's not. This is his first action this year, 2023. Yeah, Christmas Eve, he picked up an injury, and here's Finn Russell, and it's one point again. This has been a thrilling game oh, of rugby. Far too long. Yes, he was on the ball, but far too long. And as he was Where running, Kinghorn is on the fullback. Man who had five consecutive starts for Scotland at out half. And of course, Finn Russell was brought back in, left out of the original autumn squad and played so well against the All Blacks and against Argentina. Ben Healy's another arrival into the Scottish camp. And from Tipperary, qualifies for Scotland. Great take by Gray, Richie Gray. Two brothers are on now together. Richie deep inside the 22, fizzing pass from Russell. Here's Kinghorn. Very comfortable in the back three, of course, and ten now these days. Ben White and Russell determined it's on, it's to on play, the left they're, channel. They're determined to play it, aren't they, Rory? Here's Tupelotu. Dempsey. Oh, Dempsey's passed and Richie Gray. 
Well, there was no shortage of courage and bravery from Scotland there in attack. Well, the long kicking game's not played, not, not worked particularly well, and particularly when you look at the clock now, 11 minutes to go, Scotland have to Time off. start rolling the Time dice. Off. They don't need to chase the game. But there, they were lured into attacking Dempsey, inaccuracy, Richie Gray and Duan van der Merwe outside him. Well, these two met in round one of the Six Nations last year. Same fixture, different yeah, menu, menu, venue. Different menu too, I guess on the menu up there. Murray failed, 20 points and 17. England led by seven points with 17 minutes to go. Scotland came back to win that one. And after 10 minutes last year, England had made 113 metres to Scotland's three, remarkably, with nine game line successes. And then Ben White, who scored today, he scored with Scotland's very first attack. That match ended with uh, an excruciating five scrums, the first in the 79th minute, the last in the 85th, so nerve-wracking stuff. We could have the same here as George Horn comes onto the field. Thank you. Yeah, he'll bring energy, no doubt. Pacey, good form at Glasgow Warriors at the moment. Jimmy George, Chasm, he's taken multiple lineouts, clings onto the ball, in comes Fraser Brown, Barnes out of the way, Ben Youngs again decides on the boot into the space, across comes Kinghorn, Malins tries to hunt them down, Kinghorn gets it away, but here comes Ben Earl. Stewart outside him, good run by Earl. Brilliant form for Saracens, had a superb season at Bristol when Saracens were relegated to the championship no, for Max, breaking the salary the cap. The Poor pass from Youngs, brilliant pick up on the bounce from Marcus Smith. Better pass for Marcus Smith. And now here's Watson, another British and Irish lion. Jimmy George, showing great fitness levels. Ben Youngs to Marcus Smith inside for Watson. A little bit stagnant that attack from England. Release Watson now. taking the ball, virtually standing still. Marcus Smith. Kinghorn, beautiful flick up to Russell. Good skills Stop by Kinghorn, here. but he's knocked it back in field to Marcus Smith. They might go right here. See what's on. There seem to be enough Scotland defenders there as Malins is brought down. Then they win the penalty. That and that is a massive. That's a massive win at the penalty, at the breakdown for Scotland. Selling off the contest. Wow, it's a huge are. moment. Scotland were desperate. I mean, it was just was hooking that? their way out. It was, you know, a fluff tee shot out of the defensive 22 on so many occasions. But finally, something happens at the breakdown. England penalised for going off feet, but you just look at the desperate defence again. A question whether you've got to keep that ball in hand, but it did, it did feel pressure. There you go, Finn Russell Abbott downtown, Malins on the inside. I think George Horn must have managed to bounce to his feet here. Oh, no, it's, there we go. I think it's Chesham, yeah. It's the red hair and beard of Chesham going off his feet. Long ball, that's the only two of And Remember, it was a line-out move like that that led to the first try for Scotland, scored by Hugh Jones. They brought some variety to that department. Here's Fraser Brown. Tackle. Balls comes in from England, now George Horn. Great trail line oh, runner is George Horn, got to be watched on those bursts. The ball did it go out on the full. Oh, that's another unforced error that could become the kind of big moment. Ah, it's just half the ball infield, half the ball touching no, no. or go. enough of the ball touching the whitewash it's the right call but that's an unforced error Scotland with the territory and the opportunity once give up give it up again it's another millimeter moment for Scotland they've had a few of those in this second half the break down the right hand side but they definitely have numbers and support Ben Youngs the mall of England advances enough Stain decides to Call for the mark and take the, the pressure out of the moment. It's, it's just it's walked backwards about 15 metres for this. Take a long run up there. There you go. Not out here, boys. Let's go. I'm out. Scoot back to Ben Youngs. 
White! He thunders one into the West London sky, Russell underneath it. Here's it's King Horton. Yeah, they're going to run again, aren't they? Here's Tupelo. They've decided that this is the game and time, and they're really going to give it a crack from anywhere on the field. Is it going to pay off, though? Duhan van der Merbe. George Horn. Horn again for Russell. Jack Dempsey. There's a little bit of space for a moment there, but it was shut down by Marlo Atoje. Now Russell for Kalstein, and he does have space. Has he got the pace? Freddie Stewart makes the tackle. Now Finn Russell. Oh, there's lots of blue shirts here. Can they pick the right pass? Matt Fagerson for Duhan van der Merwe. Is he going to do it again? It's a Calcutta Cup clinker for the second time from Duhan van der Merwe. Oh, it's van der Merwe finish. But my goodness. Richie Good Gray, take a bow. Now warning, okay? yeah, You're 74 minutes into a Calcutta Cup, Cup game in a wide channel. And Skills under the greatest pressure. There's the ball out to Stain. Stain did brilliantly, got beyond Youngs, stepped inside. Two Pelotti was straight in his scrum half into the midfield. Russell across, there's Brown through the hands. But look at this, Richie Gray understands the pressure that's coming on from the outside channel from Merlins. It had some finishing that, that needed done. But if there is one man in world rugby that you'd pin your hopes on, it's Duhan van der Merwe. And my goodness, what a finish. What a moment. Scotland have control again. What a game. He's not phlegmatic there, is he, Thompson? <laughs> overcome by those flowing emotions. Now this kick. He's got to suck and breathe now, Finn Russell. Four points, if he can take it to six. It means England will need a converted try in the last five minutes. Oh, he's so cool. He's ice cold, is Russell, in a moment like that. Skills, look at that. That is world-class skill level. Richie Gray, for anyone watching on at home, the ability to take and give a pass, it's often overlooked, it's often underrated, but there's a moment at the top end of Test Rugby. And then he takes the restart. Let's take him back. Richie Gray back from a, a whiplash injury. That was a whiplash pass, wasn't it? Under pressure, second row. Can Scotland see out this final four minutes? Off goes Marcus Smith, the beginning of the Steve Borthwick era. They don't want to start it with a defeat, away goes Smith. The little ferret is hard to stop. Ben Youngs. Oh, and Vunapola double teamed on that game line. Simon Bergen, one of the tacklers. Farrell, Jamie George. What a shift from the hooker. Ben Earl, beautiful stuff. And Watson comes in. Cal Stain makes the tackle. Maro Atoje, Fraser Brown brings down Ollie Lawrence, Mako Vunipola. Ben Youngs tries that blind side again, explores it through Marcus Smith. Tackle! Ollie Lawrence goes in to clear out, big man over 16 stones. Move from Worcester to Bath, Worcester sent into administration. Farrell, Scotland up fast. The Steve Tandy defence is working well. Has to function perfectly now if they're going to stop this England side from scoring a match winning converted try in the last two and a half minutes. They just can't give away a penalty. Well, Nostradamus Lawson as Ben Young's chips into the space. England claim. That Malins was taken off the ball. I think he tumbled into Finn Russell. That's the way it looked from here, but Paul Williams comes back for this penalty under the post. Listen, he's got an opportunity where he goes, OK? I believe he put himself there, that's why it's a penalty. Really interesting, because this is Ben Young's little nugget that he gave Paul Williams earlier on. I said, don't give away a penalty, because it's just 
this small up, this small chance for England. The defence was holding firm. It was no doubt it was under pressure, not for the first time in the match. This is the moment. This is the game. Johnny Gray trying to lift those Scotland players. Jimmy George. This is the throw. Is this England's time? Calcutta Cup heartbreak has been for them in recent years. Chesham takes it again. In comes Scotland driving England back. That's great ball defence by Scotland. But England have the ball through Ben Youngs. Ben Earl sets it for Youngs. Ollie Lawrence, big man, good feet. Russell brings him down though. Oh, what wouldn't Scotland give now for a penalty turnover? At the breakdown, Marlow Atoze carries, Fraser Brown wrestles him down. Ben Earl's had a big impact since he came off the bench. Youngs to Marco Vinipola. Scotland rolling away quickly as they have to. Ben Youngs to Marcus Smith on the inside. Slowing the ball down and doing more. Oh, much more than slowing it down. And it's the captain with a skipper's moment, Jimmy Ritchie, with 20 seconds to go. And that should be it. Jamie Ritchie, he's had to wait 79 and a half minutes to get rewarded for work at the breakdown. You look, there's three seconds to go, they're asking the ref how long. They now know they can tap it and kick it out. Unbelievable scenes at Twickenham. Scotland, three victories in a row against England, and there is the Guinness player of the match, Duhan van der Merwe, and couldn't have gone to anybody else after those two sensational tries, Ronnie. I know I'm. I'm Scottish, I try, I try to be as neutral as I can in commentary, but this is a goosebumps moment. You know that Scotland came down here knowing that a, a big performance would give them a chance of a win. But my goodness, what a performance, what grit, what determination, what bravery Scotland have shown. Final score here at Twickenham, England 23, Scotland have won 29.